And everybody said a new amen. Our Father, we do thank you today. What a new day and what a great thing you are going to do for us today. Lord, we accept and receive it already in Jesus' name. Pray, Lord, we'll never be the same again. Our lives will not be the same again. Our ministries will not be the same. Our church will not be the same again in Jesus' name. Lord, we just pray that this year, everywhere we turn, there will be signs and wonders. Everywhere we turn, there will be miracles. Everywhere we turn, there will be answers to prayers in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life, even from this very moment in Jesus' name. The past year is gone, a new year has begun, and Lord, we pray that we'll see something new every day of this year in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We pray you confirm every word and every promise and every prophecy in the life of every one of us in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to bury the old and to resurrect the new so that, Lord, something new will actually emerge in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. We're looking at the word of God. It's in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 24. It says, And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that there that is that is in them, that in them is who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, his anointed, for of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done and now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may declare and they may speak thy word then it says by stretching out thine hand to heal and at signs and wonders everybody says signs and wonders and at signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus that was the prayer they prayed they prayed to the Lord actually as you look at when they spend their time with the Lord Jesus Christ their Savior their Lord their Master their King you will see what the Lord had told them about prayer he had told the men ought always to pray and not to faint and their challenges men ought always to pray and not to faint and their difficulties men always ought to pray and not to faint and is there persecution men ought always to pray and not to faint is there criticism or slander or something you cannot understand coming against your life men ought always to pray and not to faint they were not to complain they were not to murmur they were to pray and they were to pray with all prayer and supplication they were to pray effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man and they were to pray sometimes so we fasting they were to pray listen to this traveling warriors prayers not warriors prayer that is you are not supposed to be a warrior that is you worry 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 but you are supposed to be a warrior and because they're worried, you're praying, traveling, warrior's prayer. You're praying and pursuing at the same time because you're like an army of soldiers fighting to take over new territories. The Lord had told them to pray to the Lord of the harvest. And that, that's what they did. They came to the Lord. They said, behold, they're threatening. We want to evangelize. We want to reach out everywhere. And yet, behold, they're threatening. And Lord, we're praying now that this is what you will do. They didn't say, take us out of this place. This is too tall, the fire is too hot, the persecution is too great, take us out of this place. said, no, that all we want is that you give us boldness. That he is, uh, if our load is heavy, pray that God will strengthen your backbone, he'll strengthen your shoulders, so that you'll be able to cut. Don't say, remove my load and remove the weight is too much for me. Just say, yes, the load is heavy, the load is great. All I need is a greater kind, a stronger shoulder. I need a stronger backbone that will be able to carry the load that I have. But you know, 
know some people they say my back is weak and therefore lessen my load my shoulders are, are cracking therefore lessen my load so they say no they say the positions are there we, we saw it in your word you said they are the heathen you, these were Jewish people these were kind of religious people but they understood that it's not just religious they said the heathen why are they raging and the kings of the earth why are they speak why are they speaking against the face of the king of kings and the lord of lords they said in any case all we are praying for give us the power and the boldness and the courage to be able to declare your word fearlessly and forcefully and faithfully and that's exactly what god did for them after they had prayed they said oh you have said this that this is not taking you by surprise god is not waking up and he said what am i going to do what am i going to do they said we're ready to some two that even david the king the prophet the priest this is what he had said that a time like this will come and that time now has come all we're praying for is power from on high so when we have that power from on high we'll be able to do signs and wonders and there'll be healings and deliverances and many people will come to the kingdom of god they pray we're going to pray i said they prayed and we're going to pray and you know sometimes i look at the church and i don't understand why the church is doing like they did i'm not just saying of this church i'm talking of the church at large this country is going through what we never went through it's a kind of situation we never went through you know the story maybe you're coming from those areas yourself and you read the stories if you have not been there you know what is happening and the church is still praying the same old dumb prayer the church is still praying the same lukewarm prayer the church is still praying the same two minute prayer that never woke up an arch but then when you see there's a new challenge when you see there's a new difficulty i'll say this kind of difficulty this kind of challenge that we're having that we never had before there must be another kind of prayer we're going to really give ourselves to prayer and when we do that with all our heart all our soul and all our mind the lord is going to answer us in jesus name that's why they came together and they prayed for the salvation of the sinners they prayed for spiritual power and boldness they prayed for healing and spectacular miracles they prayed for signs and wonders and they prayed for open doors of ministry for reversing and overturning all the bloods of the enemies of the gospel they prayed for steadfastness and they prayed for courage to stand and to withstand in the evil day and exactly all those things they prayed for the lord answer them look at acts of the apostles chapter 4 and see the response of the lord to their prayer and that's how the lord is going to respond to our prayers in jesus name when you pray with all your heart all your soul all your mind with all the desires you have all the passion you have within you you forget every other thing you're not just saying of the old life and the old year somebody did this and somebody did that you just came to the lord you said lord i'm not surprised because it's according to your word and now this is what i'm praying for i'm praying that you'll give me boldness fearlessness and courage so that i'll be able to face what is happening today and even other things that may happen that i don't know yet i'll be able to face them that's how god will say if that is what you want he'll make you mightier than you ever thought in your life in jesus name and something great something great something great will happen to you and through you and for you and within you in jesus name we're looking at acts chapter 4 verse 31 it says and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together they forgot themselves and they lost themselves in the passion of their prayer they forgot about all their surrounding they just lifted their hearts to the lord their mind to the lord and they prayed and said when they had prayed when they had prayed this kind of prayer always arrests the attention of heaven it says the place was shaking where they were assembled together and it says and they were all filled they had been filled before but the holy ghost came in torrential power again in, in their lives they were all filled with the holy ghost and they were and they spake the word of god with fearfulness but humility <laughs> looking down there after me those people they want to burn my house those people they want to do this oh lord but we must preach and i don't know why they have not taken out to us out of this place all right believe on the lord jesus don't say i told you but believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shall be saved but don't tell don't tell other people i told you hold it yourself is that how they did it tell me out loud it says they preach the word of god with boldness that supernatural boldness the lord will give to us in jesus name 
that everywhere we go in the strength of the Lord in the power of the Lord in the boldness and the courage the conviction that the Almighty God gives we're going to declare that word with fearlessness because the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity he has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind and when he prayed all over once again what a great authority came what a great boldness came upon them and they declared the word of God with boldness and then he says in that verse 30 he says on the multitude of them that believe they were all with one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that ought of the things which they possess which he possessed was his own but they had all things come up the unity was great and the togetherness and the sharing and the fellowship was very great they just forgot themselves not thinking of little me or big me and little you they were not thinking of you know what i have and what he doesn't have they just brought everything together all their resources together they said this is something we must pay for we're willing to pay the price everything we have everything we've got we're going to give so that this gospel will go out and that's how they evangelize their world and that's how we're going to evangelize our world in jesus name we're going to do it i said we're going to do it in the strength of the lord we're going to do it in the might of the lord we're going to do it in the consecration the submission the surrender of everything we've got we're going to just like they did it and they brought everything they are not holding anything back they don't say okay i can give this i can't give that it's not just talking about money of course the money is there and the properties are there and every and the skills are there and the abilities are there everything they've got and that's what they brought for the propagation of the gospel and that's what the lord is telling us today that if we're going to see the same revival as we saw in those difficult days when they went through painful times and persecution, if we're going to see the same revival, we're going to be able to say, here is what I have, and I surrender everything to the Lord Jesus Christ and for the propagation of the gospel, and we're going to see this land coming back to the Lord like no other time in Jesus' name. And then he tells us, as we look at that Acts chapter 4, verse 33 now, it says, and with great power, give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great was and great grace was upon them all the Lord answered their prayer the Lord will answer our prayer he visited them in a mighty way he will visit us in a mighty way in Jesus name he gave them the signs and the wonders and he says and the wonders will visit and will also attend our ministries one and all in Jesus name I'm going to look at three points number one prevailing prayer for signs and wonders prevailing prayer for signs and wonders the kind of prayer that prevails the kind of prayer that overcomes the kind of prayer that first of all prevails within your soul prevails within your own system prevails within your family and prevails in the local church and prevails in the community prevailing prayer for signs and wonders number two positive purpose of signs and wonders why do we have to have signs and wonders what's the positive purpose of signs and wonders positive purpose of signs and wonders what it does why the church ought to have signs and wonders why you ought to pray for signs and wonders why you ought to have your personal ministry and our local church and in the national church why we need to have signs and wonders and we're not talking about just one man at the headquarters being able to do signs and wonders we're talking about the whole church we're talking about the ministers of god we're talking about the prophets and the evangelists and the and the teachers and the and the, uh, the evangelists and the apostles every everyone being able to have those signs and wonders and if you're really serious about it and say lord this is what i want and this is what i need to be able to do the work to call me to do at this time both man and woman the lord will give us the signs and wonders in jesus name because it has a purpose it gives progress gives real power it gives real penetration of the gospel in the communities when there are signs and wonders number three present day partakers of signs and wonders the present day partakers of signs and wonders we're looking at number one prevailing prayer of signs and wonders and we're coming back to acts of the apostles chapter four and we're going to see what these people did before they could have the signs and the wonders and as you look at this you'll then be able to say if that's what they did and god has not changed and the holy ghost has not changed and jesus has not changed and the word of god has not changed and the same power the seed that was so it has not changed if you sow the seed any seed you sow today like they sowed it in 200 years ago 300 years ago 2000 years ago the same seed will still grow and that's what the lord is telling us do what they did and then you'll be able to have what they had we're looking at acts of the apostles again chapter 4 
Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 25 when they had heard, when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord they lifted up their voice to God with one accord they lifted up their voice unto the Lord with one accord the same prayer request the same passion the same desire the same goal the same aspiration the same expectation the same thing they wanted from the lord they lifted up their voice where's one accord no disagreement and no discord and no pulling down and pulling up no tearing apart the same the same mind that they had and when we come together like that and we have the same goal you want to see the salvation of sinners you want to see the salvation of your community you want to see the salvation of your local government your province you want to see the salvation of the people around you and then you lift up your voice with the people of God, the same thing that we have in mind, the same goal and the same desire, the same passion and the same fruit we want to see of evangelizing the land. When you lift up your voice with one accord like that, God honors unity, He honors fellowship, He honors that togetherness that to bring to the and say, Oh Lord, this is what we want. But when you are praying for this and He is praying for that and she is praying for that and they are divergent things, then that's not how to pray. But they lifted up with their voice with one accord. And then they said the same thing and prayed the same prayer. They were in total agreement. And then they said, Thou art God, who which made heaven and earth. That is, they made the limit, the limit of his power, the unlimited strength that created the whole universe. They said, This is little, this is peanut. You can handle this because your power is so great that you made the heavens and the earth. It was traveling prayer that brought that triumphant power. Traveling prayer brings triumphant power. As they lifted up their voice with one accord, they saw the threatenings of men, but then they called on God, the Almighty, the All Powerful, the Omnipotent God, and they said, You are God, you have made the heavens and the earth. What can you not do? They said, You are God, and therefore, because you are all these are men, and in fact, everything they are saying, as as high as their position may be, your own power is higher. Your power uh, it's unlimited. They said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? They said, all that these people are doing is imagination. Imagination of a vain thing. And all those vain shadows, everything will vanish away when reality comes. They said, the reality is the power of the Lord. But all the things that all these people imagine, they are vain, vain things. When you think about the persecution that the church may be going through, or the persecution that you may be going through like that, something is going to happen. I said something is going to happen. I tell you, they went back to some two. Look at some two and see what they were talking about. Look at some two and see the kind of uh, the kind of prophecy or the kind of prediction that they had. They knew that God knew this ahead of time. They said this is not coming by surprise. So what there before them? You saw it before them, and now they're doing it. And already you predicted that the victory will come. I'm looking at here from some two verse one. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? All those uh, vanities of imagination that the people imagine said you are going to knock everything and sweep everything away because they mean nothing. It says in verse 2 the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed. It says all the counsel they take is not against us, we're just men. We're servants, we're servants of the master, we're disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're followers of the Savior. It's not against us, it's against the Savior. If you saw that, that whatever the people are putting up, they're not putting up against you, or against the church, against men or women, they're putting against the Almighty God. And it says in verse in verse this what they are saying, let us break their hand, their bands together uh, asunder and cast away their cause from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. And they said, We know what the end result is going to be because the Lord is going to laugh them to scorn. And then they went on to say in verse in verse 6, yet. In verse 5, it says, Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them, and punish them, and persecute them, and pour his wrath upon them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And then he said, Ask of me, ask of me. They said, This will not hinder evangelism. You know, there are people that are nearly simple 
children from where and they see some you know a vain imaginations of the hidden rising up they, they say they do in place to rise up and say now nah, you don't touch the gospel anymore you don't preach the gospel anymore you can't go there anymore you can't do anything anymore he said no he said in the midst of that persecution ask of me ask of me that we should pray and what kind of prayer we pray we're not praying for ourselves as i said before we're not praying at all lord i will not experience this it is on our savior went to the cross and he told us we must bear the cross our savior suffered he left an example for us that we should suffer as he suffered there's nothing to that but what the lord is saying is in the time of that challenge in the time of that persecution in the time of that pressure upon our lives that we need to understand that the people even those people that are persecuting like Saul of Tarsus who became Paul the great apostle that they need the gospel as well that's why it says at such a time in verse 8 ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen remember the heathen those are the heathen raging if you go back to verse 1 why do the heathen rage those same heathen that are persecuting those same heathen that are causing problem for that early church they said you have said ask of me and I will give you the heathen for the inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession thou shalt break them with a rod of iron and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's a vessel the wise now therefore O ye kings and be instructed ye judges of the earth serve the lord and with fear and rejoice with trembling it was said they were telling the people you are going to get converted they are going to get converted i said they are going to get converted prevailing prayer for signs and wonders and you see when you pray according to the word according to the prophets according to what the lord has said in the word the lord is going to answer i said the lord is going to answer acts of the apostles chapter 2 let's help the church came together and when the church came together they studied the word they studied the promises they studied everything the predictions of the word and then they prayed together according to the words they had studied acts of the apostles chapter 2 verse 42 it says and and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in unity they continue they continue steadfastly in the unity of the word they continue steadfastly according to the word of the lord they didn't allow anything to break their ranks and then it says in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles it's going to happen again i said it will happen again you know there was a time when the people of god are saying we don't see our signs anymore and i say okay you in your local church you might be saying that in your church in your region you might be saying that but the lord is saying the time of revival has come again the time of power has come again and a time of manifesting that same authority that we used to manifest i said the good old days the good and better days have come here in jesus name psalm 74 i'm reading there from verse 9 psalm 74 verse 9 here was the complaint of the children of israel but it turned that complaint around by prayer by seeking the face of the lord and if you will say I see that the church at signs and wonders, not just the early church, the church in the Bible, even the church of our day, our own church here, we have signs and wonders. And thank God that, you know, in that place there are signs and wonders, in that place still signs and wonders, in that place there are signs and wonders, but we want to see more of it, we're going to see more in Jesus' name. A time came when the children of Israel began to cry out to the Lord in Psalm 74 verse 9. We see not our signs, there is no more any prophet, neither is there any among us that knoweth how long. When you begin to see that this is real concern, that in your own local church you have not seen signs and wonders, in your own locality you have not seen signs and wonders, among uh, you know the leadership around you there you have not seen signs and wonders, because the concern. And then you have the passion that something must happen, something will happen in Jesus' name. When you look at the church in the whole country, in the whole country that we do not have signs and wonders i mean by the people who are there by the pastors who are there i mean by the ministers who are there i mean by the workers who are there that you know we have to depend on you know the signs and wonders coming from abroad before it can get to us but the people who are there that they're crying out with passion and they're saying oh lord if you've done it in a, you know the headquarters church you've done it in nigeria you've done it in that other place you can do it in a place too so it's not just a 
kind of a dry religion. It's not just a kind of mechanical religion. It's not just a kind of brain work religion. It's not just kind of a you know, brain knowledge religion that we just go on from day to day. Everything is dry and there's no power and there's no unction. There's no anointing. Everything is dry. There are no signs and wonders. You go through a whole month. There's no miracle. You go through a whole year. There's no miracle. It's just the regular thing and the routine thing and the read my road and you know we go from day to day and week to week and then we sing our songs and we read our scriptures and we preach all our preaching everything still remains dry and then you become concerned and say what are the signs that we used to see in our midst that God will bring back again in Jesus name you know sometimes when a, a preacher remains the same you know he comes you know the way he came and the other year he just comes the same way and then he goes through that routine and goes through everything and everything see, and, and you are sitting down there and everything is like you know, the water is not hot and you know the message is just like that and then it's, it's so cold and so lukewarm and then we'll finish again let us stand up and pray and we'll stand and we'll pray the same old down prayer that did that didn't wake up anything will not even move an inch and then we'll go back and then we'll come back again and then we'll go and we'll come back again it's going to change i said it's going to change well if he, you know if, if he doesn't change i, I think uh, god will make a change i said god will make a change that the fire will come back to the altar again in jesus name when you cry out to the Lord and you're concerned about your own self, about your own ministry, you're concerned about your family, you're concerned about your local church, you're concerned about the church at large. And so, Lord, this is what we're looking for. I believe it will come in Jesus' name. Psalm 74 again, reading from that verse, verse 9. We see not our signs. They are our signs. It is what the Lord has promised us. These are the signs that will follow them that believe. How will it happen? I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40. We're looking at verse 20. Let just be a hearer of the word. Do what it says. And if you do what it says, I believe the power will come in your life in Jesus' name. In verse 28, it says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the head of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. It says, There's no searching of his understanding. He, he, he giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the faint. If you're fainting, he'll go to. It's going to give you a part today in Jesus' name. Who are the people that, uh, you know, are fit? I'm coming back to that. I'm coming back to Isaiah. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. In Proverbs chapter 24, the word of the Lord is telling us, uh, you need to diagnose your condition, your spiritual condition. How are you? How's your strength? How's your heart? How's your life? In the things, the challenges you say, and I'm going through, I'm going through that. If, if it tells us in, in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10, if thou faint in the day of adversity, if thou faint in the day of adversity, if thou faint in the day of adversity, what's adversity? Adversity is not to crush you, it's not to destroy you, it's to bring out what is inside you. What's it tells? It tells it's not to destroy a student, it's to bring out the knowledge that is inside him, inside her. What are the opportunities for you to be able to express? Hey, I have something inside me, I have the word of God inside me, I have life inside me, I have power inside, I have courage inside me, I have conviction inside me. When adversities come, they're supposed to detect, they're supposed to bring out the conviction you have, and they're supposed to bring out the consecration that you have and the test of the adversity is not to say well you are you are nobody it's to bring out the things all the things we have been planting there and planting and planting there all these years it is the thing that it brings about you know your faith in the day of adversity it says your strength is small that strength will increase here I said that strength will increase here. And that's why it says in verse 29 and back to Isaiah chapter 40. It says, He giveth power to the to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. It will increase your strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But I said, but I said, but if you knew that, why did you wait upon the Lord? 
It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Why? They need to wait upon the Lord. If you knew, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Why is it that, you know, instead of burying yourself, maybe on your bed and saying, oh Lord, you must do something and bring revival down. Why is it, is, you know, telephony, telephony, and you're still checking, I'm checking up that one. Why don't you say, I'm going to deal without all that thing. And I'm going to wait upon the Lord. I'm going to keep my time, my attention to the Lord and whatever I've missed all the passing years I'm going to get this time you are going to get it in Jesus name it says for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength shall renew their strength and it shall mount up with wings as eagles and it shall run and it shall not be weary and it shall walk and it shall not faint they will not faint in Jesus name the Lord is telling us that if we will actually ask for the signs and wonders and we are going to pray, prevailing prayer, he's telling us that we're going to experience, we're going to have all that we have lost in the past and signs and wonders will come back in Jesus' name. But the question is, why do I need signs and wonders? Why do you need signs and wonders? Why does the local church need signs and wonders? Why, do, why does the whole church need signs and wonders? Number two, then the positive purpose of signs and wonders. The positive purpose of signs and wonders it has something it has something it's going to achieve and to achieve that purpose in your life in my life in jesus name we're looking at john chapter 4 john chapter 4 in john chapter 4 here is what he tells us in verse 48 in john chapter 4 verse 48 the lord jesus christ speaking to the people in verse 48 then jesus then he said jesus unto him Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. I've known uh, many highly placed uh, people when they see signs and wonders, that's what breaks them down, that's what draws them to the Lord. When you see real signs and wonders, a great healing in their lives, a great deliverance in their lives, a great deliverance miracle in their lives, that's what breaks them to the Lord. And Jesus said, Except you see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Look at the church, how the church grew when you saw signs and wonders acts of the apostles chapter 5 in acts chapter 5 i read from verse 12 acts chapter 5 verse 12 it says in verse 12 and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people many signs and wonders wrought it's not just in the local church it's that is in their community in their provinces you, you know the church the early church they were not just you know it's at a confined place it's at a local place it's at a little place you know just hiding there because of persecution it was the people that went out and as they went out in all those places communities where they went all those localities where they went all those provinces where they went signs and wonders followed after them and that's what it says over there in verse 12 it said that there were signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch and then it says and the rest does not does no man join himself to them but the people magnified them you see that's the result of signs and wonders they magnified and said those people they are different those people they are kind of high above the rest of us if you are really looking for something real and something new and something really definite go to the midst of those people those signs and wonders magnified them it says in verse 14 and believers were the more added to the lord multitudes both men and women in so much that they brought for they brought forth the seed into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them and there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed how many of them ever wonders why you have the church growing signs and wonders it will happen again in Jesus name it happened in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord had passed that unto us that the works I do ye shall do and greater works than these shall ye do because I go to the Father those greater works we are going to experience those greater works we are going to do is going to be manifesting in every one of our local churches in Jesus name when we just say when we uh, kick off when we when we sweep and when we take away all the things that you know divide all the things that make prayer not to be meaningful all 
all the things that made prayer to be shallow and then, and not to be effective we cast all that and then we come together the effectual family prayer of a righteous man and we bombard heaven with all our desires and we're saying oh lord this is what we want i'm telling you if all the thousands of people are in this fervent prayer the lord is going to do something I said the Lord is going to do something. If the people over here, if we bind our hearts together, and what is happening in this nation right now becomes a real concern to us, and then we forget about ourselves, and forget, forget about the petty little, little things, and the little uh, actions during prayer, and we just say, oh Lord, this nation, the condition here must change, it will change. I said it will change, but if we allow the bloodletting that is going on, we allow the killings that are going, and it doesn't concern us, and we allow all these uh, running up and down, it doesn't concern. We, we we just uh, look at people losing church buildings and personal buildings and businesses, and have everything going up in flames, and it doesn't concern us, and we're still playing the same old trees and just relax as if nothing is happening. How will the country be safe if the people here will not raise up their heart and their voice before they say, "Look, do." something in our land so that the gospel will reach out without any hindrance i believe that what you pray with that kind of passion that kind of understanding signs and wonders will come once again in jesus name and great 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 will be the victory of the church we're looking at romans chapter 15 romans chapter 15 i'm looking at verses 18 and 19 paul the apostle reporting back that this is what happened in his ministry and this is what is going to happen in our ministry to in jesus name but i will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. He said, and the impact of the signs and wonders what God did through me in those uh, Gentile nations in those places is to make those Gentiles obedient to the faith by word and by deed. It says through mighty signs and wonders. That's how it happens. It went to all those Gentile territories, all those Gentile provinces, all those Gentile localities, and then they preached the word with signs following and then he said mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and round about unto illyricum i fully preach the gospel of christ yea so have i strive to preach the gospel not where christ was was the name lest i should build upon another man's foundation you know what he's saying he said the places they went they had no copy of the bible the places they went they didn't they didn't have any kind of real true religion the places they went they were not places they even had churches or synagogues he said there was no foundation for me to even build on and yet he said when i penetrated all those places i went with signs and wonders and the power of the holy ghost and mighty things happen it will happen again in jesus name you know sometimes we go to a place and then you're sent to a place and say oh, what kind of place is it they have sent me to there's no deeper like church here what am i going to pastor who am i going to pastor you are there like paul the apostle when the foundation has not been laid, when no work has been done, and then you go there, if you go there with signs and wonders, it will not take a week, it will not take a month, multitudes will come, and you see the fire of the Holy Ghost burning, and they will come to light, the little candles in that light, that comes from the light of the Holy Ghost in your life and ministry in Jesus' name. If you go, they tell me, if a person has the power to heal, and the power to deliver, in the name of Jesus, and the power to work signs and wonders, and then he goes to a city, you don't, you don't need a unit look out church that they don't need any, anybody you don't need any other thing there you just go on the street are you sick and you have headache you have stomach problem and then before he says you lay hands on him healed in jesus name he'll say where are you where are you coming from who are you and where do you live can i follow you say follow me and then you give him the gospel you go to another person you go to the hospital you go to all the place where people have problems and you go with signs and wonders if we go with signs and wonders you are going to see people turning to the lord everywhere instead of all this a dry religion and dry preaching and everything is dry worship and then we, we uh, nothing moves anybody nothing touches anybody nothing heals anybody nothing annoys no, nothing puts fire desire you know nothing magnetizes us uh, to what you're doing but when you go with signs and wonders you don't need to have you know some church there paul the apostle said i didn't have any kind of uh, uh, walk there before i got there i when i got there was signs and wonders the people turned to the lord from jerusalem to this to this to that it will happen once again in jesus name i said it will happen in jesus name if we have the passion the desire that this is what we're looking for we're going to see that's why it says i went from place to place and i saw it done and you will go from place to place and you'll see it done 
I said you are going to see it done. I'm looking at it. Now point number three is the present day partakers of signs and wonders. Present day partakers of signs and wonders. How is it going to be and what has the Lord said? It's the present day partakers of signs and wonders. Let us look at Mark chapter 16 where, God, where Jesus gave the great commission and then he said this sign shall follow them that believe. As we believe, the signs will follow us in Jesus' name. And see it in Mark, Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to some of the people. What the people are to preach to? Tell me out loud. Every creature, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, and these signs, and these signs, and these signs, and these signs shall follow them. The power to confirm the word. The signs and the wonders to confirm the word. If you came here and you said, if I don't get any other thing, I'm going to take something out of this place. The signs that follow believers. Signs and wonders. Everybody says signs and wonders. If you will bury yourself on your bench over there and say, Oh Lord, I will not go except the signs and the wonders and the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon my life. And then you pray and pray until God says, This one means business. It's not come to see this or to see that. It's come to have the power of God in his life. This time, something is going to change. That these signs shall follow them that believe. And then says that Jesus went on and he said, When these signs shall follow them in my name, they shall cast out devils. If you know you came out of this place and then you begin to cast out devils, the work will grow, souls will be saved, people are going to be healed, and something will happen. It will happen in Jesus' name. And then what it says, and they shall speak with new tongues. And then it says, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick. And what will happen? They shall recover. What if you didn't have that? You didn't think about that. Think about that. What if in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, nothing happens? The same old dry stuff. Acts chapter 3, what if that man at the beautiful gate never rose up the same old dry stuff? Acts chapter 4, what if the boldness and the authority that came upon Peter never happened? The same old dry stuff. What if in chapter 5, and as the right that came with all their lies and everything, what if nothing happens? No discovery, no guilt of the spirit. What if nothing happens? What if the shadow of Peter never healed anybody? Uh, the same old stuff in Acts of the Post chapter 8. What if Samaria did not turn to the Lord with great signs and wonders? In chapter 9, what if Dockers did not rise from the dead. In chapter 10, what if the Holy Ghost did not come upon the house of Cornelius? And it's the same old stuff, old stuff that they just had. Nothing would have happened, but I'm saying that this time, as the signs and the wonders will follow us, something will happen in Jesus' name. That's the promise the Lord has given. And He said, This I shall follow them that believe and be believer. I said, I'm a believer. And then all those signs will follow us and the great work of the Lord will be done in Jesus' name. Look at this in verse 20. It says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word. With what? Signs following. That's how the work was done. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ promised in, in John chapter, two, chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading there from verse 12. Jesus said we are to present day partakers present day partakers of the signs and wonders. It says in John chapter 14 verse 12 it says and uh, verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works I do he shall do. You may go to amen. amen. Well hold on hold on. But now if you think about this what if we all went here and Jesus came to remember 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. 400 years. Silent years. Dark years. No prophet. No vision. No power. No miracle. No healing. 400 years in the land of Israel between Malachi and Matthew. And then Jesus showed up. And then he showed up in the temple. He read Isaiah chapter 61. And then he, closed, he said, This day, this is fulfilled in your ears. And then he began to demonstrate it. And then multitudes began to follow our time. What if the works I do, you shall do. What if you have that part today? What if you have that analogy? A man, a woman. And then you forget whatever it is you came to see. And say, this is the only thing I really want now. The same thing that Jesus Christ promised. 
that the works I do, ye shall do. And then, what if he gives you that power? I said, what if he gives you that power? Can he give you? Can he give you? And if you're serious, if you just bury yourself on that bench and say, oh Lord, this is the day and this is the week. This one, I must have this. And then you go back where you came from, from the boss that you are going. You know, somebody has any problem, you just lay hands on them, the works you did, you are doing. And then you get down there, and then the works, you see the lame, you see the blind, you see all those, and the works I did, you know, you shall do. You know, I'm not talking about, you know, sometimes testimonies uh, in our church. It's, I wonder, you know, if you have any testimony, can you come over here and give testimony? And you, you can hear the test, and you can see the kind of testimonies that people are giving. I am so and so. Uh, sometimes I even the names they're given when they say I'm so and so and then and they start and they're telling stories and you can if you have spiritual eyes to see you have mind to see and to perceive you're saying is that a real testimony or are we just making out something that it, we're even making fun of testimonies and we read equal testimonies and if you're like that and are you you know you're just everything is so superficial and I'm saying don't these people want signs and wonders from this day things are going to change I said things are going to change. We don't even need people to, you know, come out and give this money, come out and do anything. We'll see, you see that blind man there, and then you just touch him, the eyes get to, you don't need to invite him and interview him. Everybody can see. You see that limp there on the wheelchair, the fellow rises up and he was, you see that man has been dead for two days, and then the people are crying and mourning, and then you are passing, what's happening? They are crying and mourning because somebody, and then you go there, and then as you go there, they're looking at you, <laughs> what are you going to do for any man, and you know, a kind deeper life have come. It's eccentric people. It's going to be eccentric for the Holy Ghost. I said eccentric for the Holy Ghost. This eccentric man that you go that with your eccentricity. You say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the fellow say, hey, where am I? And the fellow is up. You don't need to, uh, if you have this man come up here, they won't, they won't say come up here. Everybody will say, I saw him. I saw when it happened. That power is coming upon your life. That's why it says, very late, very late, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works I do, the time of shadow things, they're going. And the time of all these artificial testimonies, they're going from the midst of this church in Jesus' name. And then the works I do, he shall do, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, that's why I came, that's why I came, that's why I came, that's why I'm here. I want that power. I want that authority. I want that anointing to come upon my life. The Lord is saying, you are the present day partaker, the present day partaker, the present day partaker. That the Lord wants to shower his blessings upon that he wants to do that in your life and he'll do it if you really mean business before the Lord and you'll say, Lord, Lord, here am I, here am I, here am I and you come for any other thing they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run, they shall not be weary and they shall walk and they shall not faint it's going to be a new year because there's going to be new power it's going to be a new year because there's going to be new anointing in here because they're going to be new authority the prayer power of the people of god that was all your heart all your soul all your mind you come to the lord and say oh lord i want that power oh lord i want that authority oh lord i want that anointing they that wait upon the lord they that wait upon the lord they that wait they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength the amount of those that grow that amount of us with wings as eagles those are the people that no persecution will shake them those are the people no trouble will shake them those are the people no problem will disorganize them because of the power the anointing that they carry you can carry that anointing today and say oh lord i come oh lord i come all my soul all my mind all my spirit i come i lay everything upon the altar whatever price i have to pay whatever price i have to pay whatever price i have to pay i want this power this power this power this anointing anointing of the Holy Ghost, anointing of power anointing of authority that god will begin to do something new something new something new in your life in your ministry that in that local church all the dryness will vanish away 
all the superficiality will vanish away all those things that are just the rigmarole will just go from day to day and then there is nothing moving there is nothing going all that thing will vanish away and you say oh lord here we are today oh lord here we are today we're looking for your power we're seeking for your power and the lord is saying the prevailing prayer the prevailing prayer the prevailing prayer for signs and wonders to come in your life to come in your ministry to come in your family to come in your ministration prevailing prayer prevailing prayer like jacob prayed i will not let you go except you anoint me except you empower me except you anoint me with your power i will not let you go i will not let you go except i experience once again a new feeling of the holy ghost a new authority of the Holy Ghost, a new power of the Holy Ghost. I will not let you go. Oh Lord, here I am. Oh Lord, here I am. I want the power once again. I want the anointing once again. I want the authority once again. I want the impartation in my life, in my ministry once again. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. That's why you came. We didn't come to just play here. We didn't come to just look at this side scene. We didn't come to just, I want to see her. I want to see him. I want to see building. I want to see land. I want to see this and that. I want to see, want to see my old friends. We didn't come for that. You came so that the power of the Lord will walk in your life. He receive the power of the Almighty God. Prevailing power of the Almighty God. Unlimited power of the Almighty God to fill your heart. To saturate your heart to turn you around to do something to do something that had never been done you tell the lord there's the lord the kind of anointing that breaks every you the kind of anointing that destroys the works of the devil the kind of anointing that makes a man out of you the kind of anointing that strengthens your inner man the kind of anointing that gives you that boldness so find your boldness and fearlessness you're telling the lord oh lord that's why i came here that's why i came here i want that supernatural thing i want that supernatural thing all the previous years what miracles took place i mean real miracles not make believe miracles all the past years what signs and wonders did you see i don't mean they just those uh, kind of superficial say dry thing we're talking about something real we're talking about something real what kind of things took place in your ministry you're asking the lord oh lord here am i oh lord here am i anointing and power and authority that breaks every yoke that makes you a different man makes you a different woman and you're telling the lord oh lord i need that oh lord i need that we've been fighting the day of adversity we've been fighting the days of adversity we've been fighting the days of adversity but now the lord is saying get up in the strength of the lord get up in the might of the holy ghost and go in face your new strength in the new year so that you can do express for the almighty god the lord is saying get up get up rise up it is time time is going time is going rise up and say oh lord here am i i present myself in a candidate a candidate for that new anointing a candidate for that new power a candidate for that new authority a candidate for that holy ghost power to come upon my life they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there's a mighty wind from heaven suddenly there was a new tongue of fire that came upon everyone and they began to speak in tongues and speak gave them utterance and then everywhere they went every where they went power everywhere they went anointing everywhere they went healing everywhere they went signs and wonders and the lord is saying it is time once again it is time once again that the church of the living god will wait upon the lord it is time once again that the people of god will wait upon him and say oh lord where are the signs you promised us because this sign shall follow them that believe i am a believer i am a believer i am a believer and i want the signs to follow after me i want the signs to follow you are telling the Lord, oh Lord, I am ready. Oh Lord, I am ready. Oh Lord, I am ready. It is that readiness. It is that readiness that makes us to pray like we never prayed before. That makes us to believe like we never believed before. That makes us to expect like we never expected before. And we're saying, oh Lord, this is my time. This is my day. Something must happen to me. Something must happen to me. A new zeal. A new power, a new fire, a new authority, a new anointing, the Holy Ghost anointing coming upon your life. The Lord is saying, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait, they that wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those are the people they are going to mount up with things as eagles and they're going to walk, they're not going to faint, they're going to run and they're not going to be weary. The Lord is calling you, why don't you at this time, 
take your opportunity why don't you at this time take your chance why don't you at this time say oh lord this is what i want this is what i need the church needs it the church needs it the world needs it everybody around you needs it they need for you to be strong they need for you to have the power they need for you to have the authority and they need for you to be able to have this anointing upon your life so that anywhere you go anywhere you go you touch the sick they are healed you touch the dead they are raised you touch the demon possessed and then they, they become totally delivered the lord is waiting for the church the lord is waiting for the church that this anointing that's a promise that you give unto you that will come in before the and say oh lord do as you have said oh lord do as you have said oh lord do as you have said that lord you are giving me this anointing this power this holy ghost and you're giving me the signs and wonders and the signs will come again and the signs will come again to his church and the power will come once again to his church not just a dry old stuff will be passing on that has not been able to evangelize the world that has not been able to revive the church oh lord do it again oh lord do it again oh lord do it again tell the lord he will do it tell the lord he will do it tell the lord will do it he's given us a promise already ask that be given unto you see and you shall find knock it shall be open to everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth unto him that knocketh it shall be opened the lord has given us a promise tell him he's a faithful god he's a covenant keeping god he will do what he has said he will do if you will call upon him the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man ability much effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man effectual fervent prayer effectual fervent prayer effectual fervent prayer effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much it will avail in your life it will prevail in your life it will avail in your church it will prevail in your church it will avail in your community to prevail in your community the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much prevaileth much it will prevail when you stand in the strength of the lord you stand in the authority of the word you stand according to the promise of, and of the lord and you say oh lord this is what i need oh lord this is what i need oh lord this is what i need the lord will do it the lord will do it the church needs the signs and the wonders today the ministers need the signs and the wonders today the workers need the signs and the wonders today the men and the women we need the signs and the wonders today the preachers and the pastors we need the signs and the wonders today the evangelists the teachers we need the signs and the wonders today tell the lord we need the signs and the wonders Jesus also a teacher, a teacher with signs and wonders, evangelist, evangelist with signs and wonders, a shepherd, a pastor, a pastor, a shepherd with signs and wonders, an apostle, an apostle with signs and wonders, a prophet, a prophet with signs and wonders, a king, a king with signs and wonders. He was the very son of God, the son with signs and wonders. The Lord is telling us that's what you need today, that's what I need today, that's what the church needs today. And the Lord is calling the church, and the Lord is saying, Come, and I will give you to you then we'll see our signs once again we'll see the power once again we'll see the anointing once again we'll see the holy ghost once again manifesting and moving you pray until the power comes upon your life you pray until that anointing comes again you pray until god will open the windows of heaven and it will shower his anointing his power his function upon your life and you will say i will not let you go except you you feel me except you baptize me except you envelope me except you energize me in the power of the holy ghost let it happen once again let it happen once again let it happen once again seek the face of the lord seek the face of the lord seek the lord and then you will do what he has promised you will do in your life seek the lord seek the lord seek the lord with all your heart all your soul all your mind seek the lord and lay everything upon the altar and say oh lord with all my heart with all my soul i'm seeking you and i want this power i want this anointing i want this unction and the lord says he will do it it says it will do it. It says everyone that has kept receive it, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Why don't you say, Oh Lord, this is what I want? I'm going back to the power of the only ghost in my life. I'm going back with the unction. I'm going back with the infilling. I'm going back with the indwelling. And the Lord will do it to your life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and say, Oh Lord, like Jacob. I will not let you go except the signs and the wonders except they come back to my life except they come back to my church except they come back to this ministry i will not let you go tell the lord tell the lord they all came together they all came together they all came together and lifted up their voice before the lord and prayed and after that prayer after that prayer great boldness great power great authority came upon them and great signs and wonders were done by the leaders in the church